Hello and welcome to another Video Surveillance Masterclass. Today we will talk about IP camera protecting ratings. So, in this class we will talk about IP camera protecting ratings, IP, IK, NEMA, ATEX, IE, CX. So, we will talk about each one, how it works, how you can understand the coding to best select your camera for your specific environment in your project. So let's start. Camera protection ratings. So in this class, we will talk about the different protection ratings a camera has. So IP and IK, NEMA, ATEX and ICX. So basically IP, and EMA, they share the same type of protection, it's in grass protection and basically we are talking about water and dust protection. So we will see that it's basically the same but uh, NEMA is, is uh, exclusive for US but they share the, the, same, uh, the same idea, the same principle and we will see the equivalent between both. IK is the impact protection. So, camera here. So here we test how resistance, how resistant is the camera in a, an impact of a, a mass, mass specific uh, distance on the, on the camera or on the device. And ATEX and IECX is related to explosion proof cameras. So just as an introduction, we we have a common misunderstanding about the explosion proof cameras. Um, some people understand that the camera will resist an explosion, so it will the structure and it will keep working after an explosion and that's an incorrect view uh, actually the explosion proof cameras are cameras that will not trigger an explosion in a critical uh, environment so like mining oil gas this type of specific projects so this is very unique and specific we have a uh, few cameras from specific manufacturers that has these uh, models, but this is not common in the you know, daily basis. But we will cover these uh, certifications to understand how we can um, extract the correct information from the label. It's a little bit complex, but we will see in the detail how we, we do that. Okay, uh, IP, IP rating is an ingress protection that basically will cover two situations. The first one is solid and the second one is related to water. So let's understand what these numbers mean on this uh, classification. So the first number over here is related to solids and the second one is related to water. The first one, zero. So this means that we don't have any protection on solids, so dust and etc. Just recall this IP classification is not uh, created only for cameras, are related to any other object that can be tested so some some classifications here will not make sense for cameras but it's good to understand what means uh, know, all the digits so the first one zero so means don't have any protection against solids or dust second one it will protect uh, objects larger than five centimeters so this means like a, like a hand 
and it's basically five centimeters is this size so very big objects number one second one here it will protect so it's greater than 1.2 So this will give us uh, a little bit like um, a, a finger, something like that, but still very big objects. Third one, it will be objects higher than 0.25 centimeters. So then it start to get smaller, like on a part of the screwdriver, it's a very uh, thin part, but it's still big object. Fourth one, yeah, our objects are bigger than 0 0.1 centimeters. So this can be like a, a thin wire or something. So it's very um, thin, but it's still comparing to dust, still big. And now, after the four, we'll talk about the number five is dust proof. So what this means, a small amount of this can enter in the camera, but it can still can work. So it's not completely sealed against dust, but it will still work and it will allow a little bit of dust inside of the closure. And the last one here, dust die. So this is the higher uh, protection level. So this means that we are not expecting any dust inside of the of the device of the camera. Moving to water. So zero means that no protection. So like solid. First one is a protection that will cover a few drops of water when the camera is totally aligned horizontally so the camera is static horizontally and it allows a few drops of water on top of the of the camera so this will be the protection uh, class one the class two is spray or few drops of a camera tilt up to 15 degrees so comparing to the horizontal axis so the camera tilt um, 15 degrees it will be able to receive a few drops or a spray of water The third one, the number three, is the camera receiving sprays or drops tilt up 60 degrees comparing to the horizontal axis. So then it's like a higher angle of ingress. And the number four is spray or splash any part of the camera so in any angle a little bit of drops or, or, or splash or spray of water uh, but it might enter a uh, few uh, moisture or a uh, little bit of water inside the, the structure Number five, we are talking about we are talking about a weak jet of water in the camera in any direction. It is still possible to enter a significant moisture in the camera, but it will be able to handle 
uh, a weak jet of water. The number six, the camera will handle a strong jet of water. So you could expect very small portion entering the structure, but it's very, very small, but it will keep working, considering a strong jet. The number seven, we are talking about the camera being protected underwater, so submerging for 30 minutes in a depth of one meter. And number eight, it will be the camera supporting more than one meter of depth in 30 minutes. Okay, so that's how we we define the numbers. And then when you see the combination in the IP classification, you are now able to understand how resistance is related to solid or dust and how resistance is related to water. Okay. So how this IP classification, the ingress protection rating can be related to NEMA. So NEMA is a, a United States standard of the National Electrical Manufacturers Association. So we have a table that we have the most common IP uh, classifications and equivalent in the NEMA. Rating. First one, number one in the NEMA, IP to zero, the NEMA two, IP twenty two, NEMA twelve, IP fifty four, NEMA four, IP fifty six. IP sixty five four X IP six 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 IP six seven and six P which is the highest IP six eight now the most common classification for cameras that you see that is outdoor cameras is IP66 and 4X. One thing that I forgot about IP is the classification that we have for cameras. So, Cameras with these numbers of solid and water protection are considered the outdoor cameras. And cameras classified on this top area are classified as indoor cameras. So this is easier to, it's like an overview, over, um, overview if the camera is outdoor or indoor, and here you get the details how it will be able to handle the environment um, condition, basically. Okay, so when we say camera, uh, an outdoor camera IP66, we're talking about an outdoor camera that is in this segment, that it will be dust type and uh, resistant to a strong jet.
Okay, so moving on to impact resistance or impact protection. So in the impact protection, we are measuring if the camera can resist a, a specific impact on its surface, on all its surface, so if it's a dome in all the parts of the dome, including the plastic dome, the acrylic dome, and the IK classification. So it will be impact protect and protection classification, but as we have the IP for the ingress protection, so this K represents kinetic. And IK and as you'll see here, that we have the different uh, IK classifications related to the mass, the distance, and then we'll calculate the energy that this object will have in the device, in the camera. And then we can have this classification of impact protection. Okay, so the first one here, before we start, just to do a quick refresh on the physics. So here the energy we can calculate as force in Newton multiplied by the distance in meters. Okay, so this will be in joules. And the force we can consider as the weight multiplied by the gravity that in this case we consider 9.8 meters per second. Okay, just, just to refresh this concept. So IK00 has the same idea in the IP, is no, uh, no protection. We don't have protection, any impact resistant. IK01, then we start to have the information. So for the first one here, we are considering a an object with a mass of 0.25 kilos and drop it from a height of 56 millimeters and this will give us 0.14 joules. The IK02 it's uh, the same as 0.25 drop it from a height of 80 millimeters and this will give us 0.2 joules. IK03 will be the same as, drop it from a height of 140 millimeters, and we'll have 0.35 joules. IK4 will be same as, drop it from a height of 200 millimeters. And this will give us 0.5 joules. IK5 will be the same as drop it from a height of 280 millimeters. And we'll have 0.7 joules. IK6 will be the same mass drop it from a height of 400 millimeters and will give us one job. IK07, then we have now a higher mass, 0 0.5, in the same height as the previous one, and it will give two jobs. IK8, we have a 1.7 kilogram mass. Drop it from a height of 300 millimeters, and it will give us five jumps. And at K9, we have now a five kilogram mass. Drop it from a height of 200 millimeters, give us 10 jumps. And the last one here will be the same five kilogram mass. Drop it from a height of 400 
millimeters and it will give us 20 joules. So this is a bunch of numbers and don't mean anything for us right now, but what we can understand the the simulation of uh, like a hammer uh, going to in direction of the, uh, the camera it will be basically in between of the IK9 and IK10 so that's why we consider it as a vandal proof resistant camera uh, camera that is classified as IK9 or IK10 so that will be will be able to handle the impact okay, so basically that's uh, the the type of certification that we will look for if we are looking for cameras, a vandal resistant camera. Normally, these type of cameras are IP six six eight six 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 seven because the construction, the the material of the of the camera are stronger. So it will probably handle the ingress of water and dust as well. Okay, so let's conclude IP, NEMA and IK. Let's now talk about explosion. Cameras. So as I mentioned before, we have ATEX and the IECX. So ATEX is basically related to the European market. So the regulation, the agents are related to the EU region. And we have two main directives that are part of this ATEX framework. So basically the first one here, the directive 137, is related to uh, health and safety of workers in a potentially explosive atmosphere. So here we're talking about people, not, not devices. The directive 114, then it's a, a directive focused on manufacturers so this should be like a manufacturer icon <laughs> uh, so it's applied for manufacturers of equipment so it will define the essential health and safety requirements so that's the, the idea behind the ATEX the IECX is um, international is the International Electronic Commission for Certification to Standards Relating to Equipment for Use in Explosive Atmospheres. That's the, the idea. So the idea here is supposed to be more easy the trade of devices that are, uh, that are meant to, to, to be installed in explosion scenarios. So. It's more not focused only for Europe, it's more like an international classification. We will see all the components that we have. So the devices has a label, and this label is not like two digits like we saw previously. Uh, we have different codes and, and segments of uh, tables, etc. So it's a little bit complex, but I will explain in the details now. So first, ATEX and IECX. I will put in the screen um, a label, a sample label, that you guys can understand and see how it looks like a label that is uh, related to an, an ATEX and another one for 
ICX. Okay, and, and basically we're talking about 11 elements on this type of labels. The first one, it's an European directive, so this CE part, the notified button number is this little number next to the CE. So this CE mark here basically is, uh, shows if the equipment has been assessed by the manufacturer and deemed to meet the European safety, health and environmental protection requirements. And this number here, uh, in the next to the, the CE, is the notified body number. And this notified body number is an organization designed to assess the conformity of products before replacing the mark in Europe. So that's the, the first part here. I will not get details in more details because that's basically what this uh, means. After that, we have this EX, that is the explosion proof uh, protection uh, logo from Magitex and then we start to have the other segments so equipment, group, equipment category, environment, explosion protection, protection type, group, temperature class and equip equipment protection level. This last one is basically only seen in the IECX uh, we, are, we don't see in labels that are only ATEX we, we can see a few labels that are like a merge, that you can have everything like this one here. But uh, if it's only for ATEX, we will not have this last part here. Okay, so this is an example of uh, ATEX plus the last part, and this is only for the IECX. So going deep in the in the concepts of the other elements, we have the equipment group. So equipment group, we basically classified in two types of groups of equipment. First one, equipment uses mines. Second one, all other areas. So we're basically talking about group one below ground and group two above ground. Okay, so equipment category. So this is related to the zone that the equipment will be installed. We have IM uh, classification and three categories. The M1 and M2 are meant to be used on mines. Category one is for equipment intended for use in zone zero or 20. And then I will go to the zones and explain better. That's the zones that we, we are handling in the category one. In the category two, we will handle zone one and 21. In category three, we are handling two and 22. So what these zones mean? We have two classifications of zones, gas and dust. And the definition here is basically the first one here, zero for gas and 20 for dust, are defined as areas that are explosive atmosphere may occur con continuously or for a long period of time. So a critical area, uh, that's the, the most critical one in, this, in these three groups. Okay, so we'll put here three blast here is explosion that will be the most critical one the second one the number one for gas and 21 for dust are defined as areas where a potentially explosive atmosphere is likely to exist under normal operation conditions so I will put here as two blasts and the last one 
two for gas and 22 for dust are defined as areas where a potentially explosive atmosphere is not likely to occur under normal operation conditions. So even that So even that we are not expecting an explosion under normal conditions, this camera must have this protection to avoid an issue. So let's move to the other element, environment. We have two types of environment. The first one we are talking about gases, vapors. Or mist. And the second one we're talking about dust or flanks. So this will indicate whatever the environment contains hazard gases, means, or vapors, or dust, and etc. It's related to the environment. Next one, we have protection time. So we have one or two lowercase letters that indicate the method used to prevent ignition in a hazard environment. We will have a table that I will put in the screen that you guys will be able to see the symbols related to the type of protection, the zones, and etc. Okay. Next one, groups. This is related to the equipment group. The first one, as we already saw in the other type of elements, is related to mines and specifically for methane, gas, and coal dust. Cold dust. The group two is for gases, vapor, or mix. And we have three subclassifications <laughs> in this group. So the first one here, the 2A, we're talking about gases such as propane. The 2B is for gases such as ethylene, and this 2C is related to gases such as hydrogen or acetylene. This is the group two. And the group three is related to dust or flying. With the subdivisions, the first one, the three A, is related to flying. The three B is for non conductive. Test. And the 3C is for conductive test. Moving to the next element, temperature classification. So this temperature will define the maximum temperature that the equipment surface may reach in the environment. Ok, 
Okay, and the last one, equipment, protection, level, E, B, L. So again, this is only required for the IEEX as ATEX category already defined in the other part of the code but we have here the corresponding coding for the API. So in this table here, the relation between ATEX 1G is GA or 1D is DA 2G GB 2D DB 3G will be GC and 3D will be DC. So basically we have here gas and dust classification, switching positions, and instead of 1, 2, 3 will be A, B, C. Okay. Okay, so this first part here is the most critical one that will handle more zone, so it's a more, uh, the protection level is higher. So the first one, as we're talking about gas, is we're talking about zone 0, 1, and 2. And the second one, for dust, we're talking about the zones 20, 21, and 22. And now the other segments, the 2 and 3, we are basically restricting the zones to 1 and 2 for gases, 21, 22 for dust, and the last one, the zone 2 and 22 for gas and for dust. Okay, so with this combination, you are able to uh, cross reference the ATEX category or uh, getting by the typical zone suitability the correct EPL for the code. Okay, and this concludes uh, the components of the ATEX and the IE CX labels. And the idea was to, to have an overview of this type of uh, ratings. Uh, so now you are able to get a device and check wha what, are the, what is the, the correct environment for, for this device when the watering grass, the dusting grass, the impact resistant, if it's in the US, the, the NEMA, uh, if it's an explosion proof, and now I can understand the difference between the ATEX and the IECX and all the components in this complex code. So it will help you to understand better when you have this uh, device in the field or if you need to design the system and uh, search for a device for your project. Okay, so that's conclude our class today, and I see you in the next class.